So just check on the back. A little light up. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nina Foley. I'm an MSW intern with the program. I want to thank everyone for coming to our exercise strategies for cancer survivors forum. I also want to let you know that this is being recorded live on our, onto our Facebook page after today. You will also be able to uh, view it uh, again on YouTube. So starting tomorrow, you can see it on YouTube. Strength for Life's Debbie Hughes will be conducting this class. Ms. Hughes, a fitness and nutrition specialist, holds an ACE certification in personal training, is a certified cancer, exor uh, cancer exercise specialist, a certified Reiki uh, practitioner, and is certified uh, in holistic health coach by the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. The goal of Strength for Life is to improve quality of life. The exercises are designed to help to combat treatment-related fatigue, decrease incidence of depression, relieve nausea, and help reduce uh, anxiety. Thanks again for coming. I hope everyone has a great time this afternoon. I have to use the mic? or am I, I bet people won't hear you in the back. OK, all right. Um, hi, I'm Debbie Hughes. I'm with Strength for Life and co-founder of the organization. Um, just to give you a little background before we get started on Strength for Life, we started in 2007 after um, a friend and mentor, Evelyn Knapp, lost her battle to breast cancer in 2005. So two years later, we started this organization to keep her memory and her mission alive. What she was was an exercise physiologist, and when she was diagnosed, she continued exercising throughout treatment, saying it was the one thing that gave her a feeling of control in an uncontrollable situation. So from there, she did make it her new mission to help other cancer patients feel their absolute best on their cancer journey. She was going against the grain, as were we when we first started, because, because bed rest is best really was the advice that was given out there when you were going through chemo, radiation, and um, fighting cancer. But in 2010, the American College of Sports Medicine changed their guidelines and the advice now is to avoid inactivity at all costs. So it really, um, the studies now that are coming out since 2010 um, and a little bit before that, really, really show the need to incorporate exercise into your treatment plan. It increases your um, daily living activities. It reduces depression, feelings of anxiety. It also um, increases survivorship. A JAMA report, which is the Journal of American Medical Association did a report stating that you have an increase of up to 60% in survivorship if you incorporate exercise into your treatment plan. It also reduces the risk of recurrence. And um, other studies now are coming out that are pretty much more a lot more detailed because it talks about your gut microbiome and all this other stuff. But again, it just shows how exercise really enhances everything um, as far as working, you know, as far as um, your helping you feel better on this journey and coming out of it healthier and then being on track for you know going forward. So um, that's basically our background and again all the good benefits. We do have our own studies that we do at Strength for Life through SurveyMonkey and all of our clients and all of our classes which are all throughout Long Island, um, Nassau and Suffolk County, they see an average increase of 50 to 60 percent in um, well-being, 70% increase, increase in outlook on future. Um, also, strength, endurance um, are always increased. Sleep patterns, you have better sleep patterns when you incorporate exercise into, the treat, into your plan, into your life. So that also is very helpful too. But we see a 60% increase in people having better sleep patterns. So our program, what we're doing is working if you if you come <laughs> and show up and exercise that's the key so a little bit about how we work is we do an eight-week program and it um we do four sessions a year of eight-week programs so basically we do january and february and then um, we start again in april and then we go through the summer and then we have a fall program um, we do that because eight weeks is optimal for seeing a difference in um, how you're feeling and your physique. So as long as you continue doing it, of course. And then we do a we take a little break. That way you don't get sick of me. And then you're excited to come back and see me, right, Kathy? Yes. <laughs> um, but also it's it's to get new people in because a lot of times it's hard to start 
when there's already a class going on, you may not know who's in there and you know what what it's like. Even though all of our classes are, we have great people in all of our classes, so it's always nice. But it's good to start new again, and then um, we bring new people in. We give you everything you need. So you have um, you're gonna get an exercise band that looks like this. Um, these are the bands that we use. <clears throat> These exercise bands, they're called resistance bands. They are the best you can use on the market for strength and endurance and to reduce the risk of injury. Because we don't want you doing free weights or anything like that. That's really, really tough on your joints. And chemotherapy and radiation is tough on your joints already. So this is why it's the safest bet to use these bands. And plus they're really easy to travel with. So when you go on vacation, you bring them with you. You put them in your suitcase and then you text me and you tell me that you're <laughs> See, thank you. <laughs> she has hers. <laughs> she travels with it. <laughs> so um, we also give you a, a yoga mat and we give you a FISA ball. So it's a FISA ball, also known as a stabil stability ball. It's a, a big ball that we use in our classes. They're also great. They're a little bit of a pain to carry around, but we figured out best how to do it. We, we got bags and we shove them in the bags. It's always a comedy show before and after class doing that. But, um, but those are really great to even use at home if you're sitting and watching TV or you're doing computer work because it really does tighten your core and it really makes you concentrate on kind of standing up really tall. Well, a lot of us these days are kind of like this. I always tell my kids too, just sit on the ball because it really does help. Um, but that really helps with your balance as well. And not only do we have to worry about that when you're in treatment and the medicines that you're on sometimes do cause neuropathy or different kinds of um, issues, side effects, this will help with that because we're trying to get you to get that connection back. So it's um, sometimes we don't start with them right away or some people will go right on them. In our classes, we really do gear towards what your needs are. So even if there's a very big group, like our Winthrop class has a very big group, um, I know what everyone's needs are and my message always is, you know your body better than I ever could and you have to listen to it. And you, you have to be in charge of where you are. Don't push yourself, know your limits. Just because I'm asking for something, if it doesn't feel right, all you need to do is tell me, I'll give you a different exercise to do. Um, and our, you know, we call it the no judgment zone. Nobody's judging you in our classes. You do what you can do, and, you know, and everyone's there to support you, and, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, what else I wanna talk about? Lymphedema, because I know I noticed your sleeve. So. Um, exercise really, I didn't mention that before for a benefit of it, it really um, helps reduce the risk of lymphedema and if you have it, it does reduce the swelling. So there's a number of studies out on that. With three weights, bands will be the same exact thing. And um, in our classes, the way I was trained as a certified cancer exercise specialist, the first thing they taught us is that you always split up your body parts. So you will never see us in our class, the way I standardly learned when I was in school for exercise science was that you would do um, all of your legs and then all of your upper body. The way we do it when you um, are going through treatment is that you'll do two upper body, two legs. Two upper body, two legs. So you wanna constantly flip up and down because it really does help the lymphatic flow. And that's what that's all about. So you don't wanna pull in one area. So that's, you know, just for you, if you don't come to the classes, know that when you're exercising, do legs, go to the upper body, do a little legs, go back up to the upper body, just flip it around. Also another thing, um, and I do do this in one of my classes in Bayshore class because we have the equipment there, rebounding is excellent for lymphatic flow. And that rebounding is um, a little mini trampoline. Have you guys ever seen those? All right, so they have these little mini trampolines and you know, it's not jumping up and down like it, as if my kids were to go hop on it. We wouldn't do what they would do. All you do is stand on it and you just do these little compressions just like I'm doing now. And the G-forces, just, it just forces you to move that lymphatic flow. It's really good to release toxins also, and um, you know, promote <laughs> sweat and stuff like that. But that actually has been proven better than most other things on the market today as far as wraps and all that other stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's, it's phenomenal. So I actually had a client that, um, a strength life participant that had lymphedema in the chest, which is a really, really tough area to get it and to help it because it's really hard to wrap that area. So she started doing the rebound, I gave her a rebounder, she started doing the rebounder. She started with 10 minutes a day and then she built up to watching like um, 
oh, what was the show? Let's make a deal. <laughs> so she would watch the whole Let's Make a Deal. She built all the way up. They were amazed when she went back to Stony Brook, um, the lymphedema center. They were like, what have you been doing? It, it was like greatly reduced. And she told them, and she, they were like, yeah, you know, that's, so there are a lot of natural, you know, natural ways that exercise really does help you with all, all of this stuff. Um, all right, let me see. Did I forget anything, Kath? No, I forget anything. Come on, you were in my class too. You didn't know nothing. Um, all right, our class. Oh, so we're talking about the exercise here right now. And again, we do an eight week program. We're starting again April 9th in um, Winthrop. And on the website, here's the website. So you'll see exercise classes. You can click on that button. It's going to take you to a landing page that shows you Nassau and Suffolk County. If you click on one of those, it's going to show you where all of our classes are. So we are, most of you guys, I'm assuming, live in Nassau County. So our classes out here are at Wanto World Gym, Winthrop University Hospital, and Monster Cancer Center. We're always looking for new locations. If, you, if there's a need that's not filled, like we were talking about Woodmere earlier, and um, I will follow up with New York Sports Club. I made a note, so I'll, I'll check them out. And um, we're always looking for new locations to fill little voids. If, uh, if we're not close enough to you. We do like, we call ourselves the traveling trainers because we don't want you to travel more than 10 minutes to get to a class. Because it's exercising for anybody is hard and it's hard to keep that, you know, on your, keep going with it. So what we want to do is really reduce that burden of travel and to um, hopefully you like us and you like everyone in the class and that makes you want to keep coming back. So that's good. Um, um, we also do, besides exercise classes, I just want to mention our other programs. We also do do wellness retreats, which are phenomenal. And they, um, what we do is pay for a whole weekend away. We include breakfast, lunch, dinner, overnight accommodations, breakfast the next day. And we do it at the Long Island um, Hyatt Regency. <clears throat> yeah, Regency. In Hop Hog, we've been there for, since 2009 doing these retreats. We just completed our 25th retreat. And our retreats are all about introducing you to um, different healing modalities. Because we do believe that there's a lot of things. We believe in your medical care and your doctors, but we also believe there's a lot of other things that maybe you could take charge of a little bit on your own. So we introduce you to maybe yoga. Every retreat's different. You'll always get the exercise, because I'm always there. Um, and you'll always get our Reiki circle, which is phenomenal with sound healing. So. Everything else, it's a crapshoot. Like last one, last time we had acupuncturists come in and do um, acupressure, well, acupuncture points along the ear. Um, we also had um, a meditation. We had yoga. We have feng shui for healing. Every retreat's different, but the whole point is you check in nine o'clock Saturday morning with us, and you go the whole entire day. We do art therapy. It really depends what's going on that day, who we can get to um, the volunteer and stuff. And then by the time night rolls around, you know, we feed you in between, so you like us and you know, whatever. And then we, at night, we do, um, after dinner, we do normally have some wine. Yeah, at least, at least I, I know you did. Some have more than others. <laughs> but, um, but we, you know, we just relax. We have a beautiful room that we hang out in and everyone just connects and it's, it's real, real nice. And then the next day, um, we normally do, last, we did an empowerment group the next yes. morning. This last, I know you. So Kathy was just at our last retreat in February. It's, ju it's just an experience that you will never forget. Never. What goes on there, you will never, never forget. You know? Yeah, it's powerful. It it's good stuff. It really was. Everyone was one better than the other. Everything was just, you couldn't get enough of them. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are, our, our retreat's really, and it's, you know, it's not us, it's the, the people that come are just magnificent, so it's really, really, really good. Yeah. And the hotel's gorgeous, and the food, we, we haven't figured out. We feed you very healthy food. pretty good, the healthy food. Yeah, <laughs> we're very picky about our menu. Um, oh, and that's, we also get presentations by a naturopathic doctor, uh, Dr. Siobhan, who's actually um, a part of the Strength of Life team. So she does part of our other programs besides the retreat is um, nutrition classes. We offer nutrition classes by Dr. Chiffon, um, which is really good. It helps you in your healing also. And um, an empowerment group, which the next one's going to be out here. We're doing an empowerment group out here, and those are fantastic too. It's not, I don't like calling it a support group because it's really not a support group. It's, it's not something that you come to when you talk about different things. Really the focus is on um, finding trust in your journey 
and I, I'm not even giving him credit by saying that, but Teresa Doherty, who's, who's also a part of Strength Life team, runs these classes. She's a breast cancer patient survivor herself. And um, it really is all about um, what you can do to help you on this journey. What, you know, what do you need? What, do you, what can you get from this whole entire thing? So that's really our focus. Um, and each one's different. So sometimes she'll bring in meditation people and stuff like that. Um, but I know that one. Do you know the date for that yet? You guys booked it. It's Monday, 6.30 to 8.30. 2163 Jericho Turnpike. She's like an advertisement. <laughs> Garden City Park. Garden City Park. Monday. It's this Monday? Monday oh. All, right. All right. Are you on the empowerment list group? No. Uh, okay, sign up for it yeah. because you'll get. Yeah. So now again with the website where it says, all right, so exercise classes I walked you through. You can go there and register for anything. And I encourage you to register for as many as you want to. You don't have to stick to one location. I want you to go to as many locations as you can. So if Monte Cancer Center and Winthrop work for you, Monster Cancer Center's on Thursday nights, Winthrop's on Mondays. Perfect, you get two days of exercising. That makes me really, really happy. So that's good. It won't get you out of wall squats or anything like that, but it just makes me happy. <laughs> so that's good. Um, the next one, but you have to register for more. Check off all the boxes so that way you get on my mailing list. Um, wellness Retreat, you see that you can register. I would highly encourage people to register. We do have about a 100 person wait list for our wellness retreats. So when we work through it really quickly, um, but we, you know, I'd like you to get on that list. The other free programs, that's where you're going to find our empowerment group. Register there for that, our nutrition, a walking group. We have all different stuff. That area is always changing. But if you're interested in Monday's empowerment group, get on right now. That way we can send you the email with the information. Um, all right, I think I think I talked enough. So let's move. Um, so I'm going to take you through a typical exercise class. Uh, we would do a, a little bit of a warm up, so you guys can just like lift your shoulders. In, in your chairs. Don't always do what I do, because I do like weird things like that. And I, people always follow me, and I'm like, no, don't do that. So we're gonna lift the shoulders. Good, roll them back. Good. And roll them forward. Reach up nice and high. You can put your hands together or you can keep them separate. It doesn't matter. Whatever, it's up to you. Good. Slowly just turn your whole upper body to one side. And then bring it back the other way. Oh, we started yoga too. Sorry, I forgot about that. This is reminding me <laughs> of yoga all the way around. And bring it down. Good. Now you guys could, in your chair, I'll start with a, a couple of leg exercises. So just make sure you have a little bit of room because you are going to do a couple of different things. And uh, I always call this one like our kick loin one, our rock cats. So try to stay in sync with each other. That makes me happy too when all the legs move at one time. All right, so all you can do is sitting down, you lift your leg, right leg. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now to the side. So you lift and you just tap to the side. Good. One, two, good. Now we'll do this on the exercise ball or in a chair. It depends on you know where you are, what level you're at, and what you feel comfortable with. Good, all the way around. You have two more. And now you're gonna come up, and I know you're gonna be tight for room, but good. Squeeze it out. One, keep it high. Two, three, that's a good way to do it. Four, five, six. You really contract that quadricep muscle. Seven, eight, Nine, ten. Now keep it up and just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. You should feel a little bit in that leg. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Good. See these simple things, and you can do this in front of the TV, you know, and these that you're not with me. It's all easy stuff. All right, next leg. So we have to balance them. Ready? One, two. I'm counting good today, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take note of that. Five. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Eight, nine, ten. You'll see in class we sometimes do way more than we should because I don't count very good. Good. Over to the yeah. side. Where are we? Three. Four. Five. Lift it high. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, and here's ten. Now we're coming forward and squeeze it out. One, two, tighten that quadricep. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Keep it up there. Ten. Now, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. All right, shake them out. Feeling okay? Good. All right, so I'm gonna have everyone stand up. If you're comfortable enough standing, stay right where you are, that's okay. Oh, am I allowed to move that? Absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, right where you are, I'm gonna stay with the legs. So we just did one leg, we're gonna do our second one, then we're gonna move to the upper body to keep with that lymphatic flow that I was talking about earlier. So you're just gonna pray that, that this is over soon. All the way down, one, two, good. Three, four, five, everybody's knees okay? Feeling all right? Eight, nine, we're going to 12, 10, 11, 12. Good, shake it out. I'm gonna have you do one more leg because it's really not, um, it's not a tough one, but you're in a good spot for it. Put your hands right on the chair in front of you, or you, you guys should be okay. You may be okay, because we're just gonna do calf raises. So if you have good balance, you're gonna be fine, but if not, you can hold the chair in front of you, and just go up to those toes and squeeze the calf muscle nice and tight. Now the trick to this is really taking those toes in your shoe, spreading them out, Roll from your pinky to your big toe, and then bring it down. You're gonna feel a difference if you follow those instructions. All the way around. Good, four more. Three, two, one. Good, shake everything out, perfect. All right, so if, um. I have a couple of bands here. Does anyone want to try some of the bands? We're gonna do bicep curls, okay? So if you have the band, if not, you can just pretend like I'm going to do, and you keep your elbows close into the side. There you go, go all the way up, and slowly down, right back around. Now, believe it or not, you can get a workout without even using the band. This thing isn't gonna break? No. <laughs> well, they do, I have to tell you, they really do. I can <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, occasionally, I always have everyone check their bands before they start it because they do snap every now and then, especially if you've been using them a lot. Um, but it, that's, it scares you more than anything. The, these bands that I just bought, the ones that you have now, they actually double layered, so they have an internal cord too. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. No, it's a good question. Leave it for me to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always say if you leave them in the car and it, it yeah. gets hot and you know stuff. Okay. 
that does happen. You'll see it with the balls too. They deflate a little bit. All right, see, I lost track. So we applied it like 50. <laughs> so we're okay. This is, this is exactly how our class is run. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do, and then I always go, we're gonna do two more. <laughs> All right, and then one more, good. All right, so how did it feel with the bands? I know you know. How did the bands feel okay? I could feel the resistance, right? Yeah, so now there's, there's green bands and there's red bands. I do carry both of them in my class. Green is a little bit lighter, and the red is a little bit hotter. All right, so you're starting, you're starting nice and tough right out of the gate. All right, so now what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do this one. This is a little challenging, so you can step on the band with one foot. All right, so now this is the fun thing about the bands. You can make the resistance even harder or easier, so you really gauge it to where you are. And that's the nice thing about them, because as you get stronger, then you may wanna step on them with both feet and make it a little bit tighter. All right, so now, your right arm, your left arm, you, can you do it with both arms? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'm gonna have you do it with both. This is kind of a new exercise, so it's yeah, even new for you. We, um, and this is the thing, if, if you have different surgeries or if you're in radiation, anybody in active radiation? You guys who have the bands, I'm not worried about anybody else. The band, okay, because if there is, there's just certain things that I need to know, because with radiation, you don't really want, if you're having radiation done, you don't want to um, have like friction against skin to skin. So I would have you drop your band in that case, and we would just go through the movement but if, that, if everyone's good, we're gonna go through the movement with the bands and then everybody else without them. So this one's gonna be for the deltoid. You just work the bicep out. Now we're gonna do the deltoid muscle. So all you're gonna do is pull it up and bring it down. Now you guys with the band, you're gonna pull it up right about to the chest. Everyone else who doesn't have a band, you actually can come all the way up. You're gonna feel it a little bit more in those shoulders when you come all the way through. Just don't try that with the bands because what's gonna happen is your form's gonna break and I'm all about form. So you want to make sure that just your breast. Yeah, exactly. All the way through. Because what happens with the band is that you're gonna start going like that. And I don't want you to do that. Good. But with us without the band, we can come all the way through, keep those shoulders dropped, and squeeze it all the way. I know. It's it's a tough I know. I know. It looks like a little harmless band. It's not. I'm telling you, it's good. Good stuff. All the way through. How are you feeling on this one? Yeah. We haven't really done this in class. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Anybody? Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> she fit perfect in. <laughs> Three more. Good. Two more. And one last one. Good. Shake it out. Roll it out. All right. So now you have a good idea of how the bands work too. So we do do a, we do a lot in our classes with um. Obviously, we use the bands from beginning to end, unless you have something going on that you want to maybe um, not do that. Or you can use one arm on a lot of things. So right now, we'll do one more upper body. Um, you can stand both feet on, one foot, I'm sorry, one foot on the band. And we're going to be doing this in our chair, coming out to the side. Now again, with the band, you're only going to come out to about here, because you're not going to be able to come up further. Because then you're going to have to really compromise your form. We're not about that. So. Come up where you can. Everybody else, we can come all the way through and then slowly release it down. Yeah, watch your neighbor all the way through, slowly release it down, right back through. All the way back up. Good, everyone feeling okay? So you should feel this in your shoulders. Even without the band, you're gonna feel it in your shoulders. Move, movement is really good. And the more you concentrate on the muscles that you're working, the more you're gonna get in there. So this one again is your deltoid. It's all your shoulders that you're doing. Nice and slow up, keep that form. We'll just do three more of these and then we're gonna go back to the legs. Good, and one last one. Yay, all right, I'll let you off the hook now. <laughs> Thank you, yay. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the legs. So, with the legs in the class, we do a lot of different things like wall squats. I'm not gonna make you guys do that now because we don't have enough wall space with the amount of people we have. So we're just gonna do another squat. The squat that we did before was the standard sumo squat, we call it. So I had you kind of going down. This one's gonna be what we call a skier squat. So now your, hip, your feet are gonna be about hip width apart and your toes are gonna be forward. And I would encourage you, if, you have, if you're worried about your balance, to use the chair in front of you to balance you. If, if you guys are okay, you're fine. Otherwise, you can go against the wall and, and do something to that effect. So you want to slowly sit back and come up. 
Now, the one thing to take note of is that you don't want your knees coming all the way over your toes, okay? You want to sit back into it and come all the way up. So it's not about how far you go down with this one, it's about your form again. So make sure those knees stay in line with those toes. You don't want to go too far over. So that's all about sticking out your glutes and coming down into it. Did everybody feel okay? All the way around. Nice and slow down. Good. Make sure you breathe through it. So now this is working out your quadriceps and the glutes, a little bit of the hamstrings as well. So after we go through all of our exercises in our class, and I, I can't even tell you how many we do. We do a lot of different exercises, but I always save about 10 to 15 minutes at the end for cool down and stretching. Because stretching is really, really important to do. And last one. All the way through. Good. All right, shake it out. So now we're going to stand and um, I am going to put you guys against the wall on this one because or they, they, they're okay over there, right? Yeah. Alright, so hold on to the Adelphi thing because we're just going to do a side. And you guys can hold on to the chair in front of you. So all you're doing is coming out this way. Now you see how my knee is bent slightly? So you come out to the side and you're right into that glute. Perfect. Out to the side and into that hip area, the glute, all that area. Make sure you're breathing through it. Good. Keep the knee bent and your toe pointed up. Dorsiflexed. Good. So you let the heel lead up and out. You'll feel it a little bit different in that. Now every body is built differently, so if you're not feeling it, particularly when we're in class, if something's not feeling right, you just let me know and I'll kind of switch around your form a little to get in there a little bit better. Because I feel like I'm like this way. Mm -hmm. You're leaning heavily on, to, on your right leg. So shake it out. All right, everyone can stop and shake it out for a second. Good, now we're going to do the other side. Now bend your knee. Dorsiflex, with your heel, come out. <laughs> Good. So try to stay centered, because yeah. I see what you're doing. You're leaning I yourself. I see what you're doing, yeah. Good, tighten your, tighten your core. Good. Perfect, all the way through. And again, a lot of these exercises you probably haven't done, so now even the leg that's holding you is gonna start getting very tired. And you're going to feel that. That happens often. But I promise you, by the end of the eight weeks, you guys will feel so different. All the way through. Even getting on the ball, like I'll have you sit on the ball and just get used to it and do um, like hip circles. By the end of the eight weeks, you're usually much more comfortable on that. A couple more. Last two. Oh, you can't see. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I had trouble with that one. Oh, okay. And last one. Yeah, yeah. So and that's good. So if you feel something that doesn't feel right, don't do it. And again, I emphasize this all the time. You know your body better than anybody. So if something doesn't feel right, don't do the exercise. Let me know. We'll do something else. Like in a in Winthrop class, Diane, she does everything. One of our clients has really bad neuropathy, so she does most of the stuff in the chair. When we're doing things like this, it just doesn't feel right. So we put her in the chair, and I give her a ton of exercises for that. So it all works out. Um, what we'll I'll have everyone sit back down now, and we're going to do some ab crunches, some core. I'm looking good on time, right? Yeah. Do you want a chair? No, that's okay. I'll, I'll instruct you. All right, so working on the um, core, what we'll do in class is we'll either go down on the floor, and again, it all depends on what level everyone's at. So at, I'll use Winthrop again because you guys are here. We have some people that are on the floor for ab crunches and for stretches, because once I get you down, I'm gonna keep you down, um, or on the ball, or in a chair. So we have three different levels going on. So again, it's for you to decide where you are. Don't push yourself. People always try to, to push themselves to the floor first, and they're not ready for it. Um, don't, it's, it doesn't make sense to do. You have to kind of just honor where you are right now. Um, 
So if you're on the floor, you lay flat and we'll do traditional ab crunches and we'll use the ball for that too. If you're in the chair like or on the ball or in the chair like we are right now, um, on, in the chair you're going to sit up nice and tall and all this movement is about is bringing your ribs to your hips. So I want you to picture that. So ribs to the hips. So you're just kind of crunching this in. So it's not coming forward. It's crunching down just like that. You're going to try to exhale out when you're bringing that rib to the hips and then you slowly come back up. Exhale it out. Good. Everyone looks good. There's no like crazy movements. You're just bringing it right down. It's almost like a pelvic tilt in your chair. Okay. So the belly button goes through your back. Focus on that belly button, squeeze it through, and come right back around. Five more. Tighten it up. Three. Two. And keep it contracted. One. And release. So you should have felt a little bit of contraction in there. Sometimes it's even hard to figure out where your abs are. If you haven't done any of this in a long time, it's true. I mean, really, you're like, well, I don't feel anything happening. But it really does come with time. And once you do the movement, and a lot of it is your mind, like realizing where things are in your body and then tapping into it. It really does help a lot. So I'm just going to do a little, I'll show you a couple of the, we'll do back bridges and stuff like that too. So just, uh, that's really good strengthening for the back and supporting. Because when you, when you work your abs, you really should also work your back. They, they're kind of like, a part of each other. You don't want to do one without the other. Um, so what we're going to do now is just a little stretching. So I'm going to have you put one leg out in front of you. And now on your bent knee, the knee that's not out in front of you, you put both of your hands and you try to put your heel on the floor if you can. That's your straight leg. Yep. And you're going to lean right into the bent knee where your hands are. You're going to feel it all up in this area. The leg that's straight, you should feel stretching all up in that area. And just hold it. You don't want to bounce up and down. You're going to hold it in that area. And just keep stretching. So ideally, you want to hold the stretch for about 12 seconds. And you want to breathe through the stretch. And just holding on to it. Now in that position, you can point your toe. And then you can bring it up and then point it and bring it up. Good. Do a few more of those. Now, if you were on the floor doing the stretches, you would have your leg up in front of you in the air and you'd be doing ankle circles right now. <clears throat> and last two. And last one. Good. Now, where you are, you're going to stay with the leg that's straight, and if you can, you're going to bend it and put it over your bent knee. Now, I'm very, very tight in my hip flexors, so this is a very hard thing for me to do when I'm seated. Most people are doing that. That's good. If not, I want you to bring your leg that was straight in front of your shin. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. And just hold it there. If you're in the chair, you can hold it, and you can take your hand. And you can push on that knee if you can. Don't push yourself too hard. You just want to kind of give it a little gentle guidance there. And holding on to it. Don't push yourself. <laughs> Getting in trouble already. Come on. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. It's, it's not worth it. Because you just, it's the first time you're doing this. It's almost like getting lubed. You know what I'm saying? You have to like, after a couple of sessions and your body's all like, okay, I get what we're doing. Then I would help you do that. But no, not today, don't, don't worry about it. And again, you know, hips always are naturally very tight, so it's just not worth pushing in. Good, everybody else looks pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna switch legs. So now that leg is gonna be your bent one, and the other leg is gonna go straight out in front of you. You're gonna put both your hands on the bent knee, and you come forward and hold it in that position so you feel all that stretch. Good. Holding on to it. Plus, you don't want to be super sore because then you'll never want to exercise again. So, <laughs> so 
So the first couple of sessions, we actually are very, very nice in class because we like suck you in. And then after that, we're like, oh, we're like what happened? Okay, now you go into point your toe and then flex it up and then point and then flex. Now I know this is a this is a breast cancer group, correct? Yes. Yeah. So strength for life, just to let you know, because I didn't mention it, it, we are for all cancers. So men, women, all cancers, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're open to everything in our classes. We do have dedicated uh, breast cancer ones, but for the most part, it's open for every everybody. And our wellness, all of our programs are. Okay, now we're gonna flip that over, just like we did with the other one, if you can. Otherwise, you see how much more flexible you are on the one side? Yeah. So that's very common. There's one, and I am too on this side. There's one hip or one leg, one hamstring, one quadricep, it's just our body isn't built exactly the same on both sides. That's going to be much more flexible than the other. That's okay. You'll see that when you're working on the FISA ball too. It's very interesting, like when you're down on the floor and you put your feet on the ball, you're gonna pull like violently one way as opposed to another way. It's really interesting. But that's all we call that proprioceptive skills. You have to kind of like build that. It's teaching your, it's teaching your connections to kind of balance out. It's all good stuff. Good holding on to it. And push down gently if you can. Relaxing. Okay, now we're going to take our arm. We're going to bring it all the way across our body. Try to sit up straight in your chair for me if you can. In fact, you know what? Before we do the arm, because I'm going to get into a position, put your hands behind you. Come a little bit to the edge of your chair. Not too much, but just enough so your, your hands can kind of open your chest up. And really, like, bring your head back and open up that chest. Stretch all those, the pec muscles, all of that. Holding on to it. Make sure you're breathing. Good. Okay, now, staying where you are, you're just going to take your hands from behind you, and now you're going to bring your hand across. Okay, so now what I'm doing is forcing you to kind of keep yourself nice and, and tall up, so you're not leaning into the chair. You're stretching, you're keeping yourself tall, you're tightening your belly, and you're bringing that elbow all the way across. And slowly bring it to the other side. You can hold hands, it's okay. <laughs> Good, relax, and just roll it back. Roll it forward. Shake it out. And that's a mini session. I hope you guys liked it. How's our time? We need to... Good? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Um, can I... We just had a new video done. Because you guys hooked me up with all this fancy stuff, can I play it? That way, if we have a few minutes, all right, so, and you guys will see yourselves in the video. Um, so, Strength Life just had, just in case I didn't hit on anything today, <laughs> we just had a video done. Oh, you know what? Maybe I should, you want to show the video and then do question and answer, because I know there's always questions if people have them. Um, actually, I'll do that first, because the video, you know, if they, if they want to do it or not. So, <clears throat> if I didn't hit on anything, that will certainly cover the rest of it. But I, I'll take questions now if anyone has questions, because I know. What about the right hand? Do you do that? I, I do do that, but we don't do that in the classes. Unless, you know, like I'll sometimes do it on some people that are having a hard time during class. But our Reiki um, circles, they are at our wellness retreat. So we do a huge Reiki circle at the wellness retreat. It's always at 4 o'clock. This never changes. 4 to 5 o'clock, and we do, um, we limit our wellness retreats to about 20 to 25 survivors per retreat to keep an intimate environment um so we don't want like a big you know a big retreat so typically we have about 36 reiki practitioners come so at most times you'll have two healers on you at one time and then we do the sound healing with that but if you're interested in 
doing Reiki circles, you can certainly shoot me an email from the website because I do have um, contacts all over the island that they'll do free Reiki circles at different areas. Um, a lot of mine are in Suffolk County, but you know, I'm sure I can find some in Nassau if that's what you were looking for. I'm basically from Queens, if there's huh? one there. Okay, I can I try to find myself. I, you know, we're all healers within ourselves. Yes, that's we how are. I feel. Yeah. Um, You'd fit in perfectly at a wellness retreat. <laughs> you should sign up. Yeah, and, and that really is true. Um, but it, it definitely is powerful too having somebody on you with the yes, hands-on sure. healing. Yeah. Have you done it before? I, I, Have you gone to? No, uh, I haven't. Okay. I just Yes. Getting mm -hmm. myself into it. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, it is very good. I mm -hmm. find it very relaxing. Extremely relaxing. Yeah, it is a form of meditation. It really mm -hmm. is. So um, I, I will, if you shoot me an email, my my email address is um, strengthforlife at optoonline.net. And I will try to put you in contact with, um, I'll put you in contact with my master who knows people, you know, everywhere. Um, so Reiki, I don't know, we're talking about that. That's just a, it's a form of hands-on healing. It's, it, it is about that we kind of all have this innate ability to, you know, make ourselves feel better. And it's, you know, without getting too technical about it. Um, but it's, it's, it's nice stuff. And I know from the Reiki circle, we've had a couple of really, that last retreat had amazing experiences yes. from it. So it's, it's nice stuff. And you have to come to retreat. You, did you sign up yet? Oh, see, this is what happens. People get nervous, but they're so good. <laughs> so it's okay. Um, any other questions? If you're unable to do the full eight weeks of the exercise class, can, can you come and go as you? Yeah, so you'll get extra wall squats after you miss a class. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're pretty flexible. I do like you to kind of stick to it, but I, I do understand there's vacations and Sometimes you don't feel well and weather, you know, there's all sorts of different things. So I, I like you to try to stick to it as much as you can. Um, that way it just keeps it, so you see the results. Right. That's really what it's about. But I'm pretty flexible, you know, like I do get worried if I don't see you in a couple of weeks, you know, so if shooting me a text or something like won't be there tonight or something like that. Right. So that's it, but yeah, did, did you sign up? No, this is my first time. Oh, okay, only because someone just sent me a note saying they're not gonna be here for the the first date, I didn't know if it was you. So that's okay, I like you to come for the first time because that's when you get your equipment. And I start getting crazy after that because then if you come week two and then I don't have the equipment with you and now you don't have, so it's, the first day is kind of important just so I know who's coming. And if you do register online, the way it works is that, you guys don't have to re-register by the way. Right. Yeah, so what, yeah, it's like once you're on the list, you're never off of it. <laughs> Forget it, you need emails forever from me. <laughs> so people actually, that can you take me off? I'm like, no. Just in case I decide again to come join me. But um, so you'll, you'll go through the website and then I get your information and where, and you'll check off the box, like where you want to come, what classes you want to come. And then about a week before the class, I send you out um, an email saying, okay, we're on, we're starting April 9th, Winthrop, 6 to 7, 100, whatever the address is, 100 Mineola Boulevard, parking is under the garage. I give you all the details and then you have to confirm, yes, I'm coming and I'm new. So that way I know how much equipment to load into my car because once I unload it, it's yours. I don't have to ever touch it again. So the first night's a little crazy though. Are there any criteria for people to participate? Do they need to be in active treatment or? Nope. No, I have people who are like 30 years out and you know, and we don't even, um, the only thing I do need if you are in active treatment or if you're less than five years out, we do need a um, medical clearance. Just a note from, I don't, care which doctor it's from. It doesn't have to be an oncologist. It, it, just from a doctor saying you're cleared for exercise. Um, I do need that for my records, that's all. Um, that's only if you're less, less than five years out. Um, also, we it's continuous, so you know, when we first started this years ago, 11 years ago, our thought was to let people do two eight week sessions and then, like, because we want you to get back into a gym setting if that's what you want. But we've learned over the years that's really not the best atmosphere, particularly if you, even if you're out of treatment for a lot of years, sometimes side effects don't start for, until years later. And being around other people who are experiencing this, you guys learn so much from each other, it's really crazy. I mean, this has nothing to do with strength for life, it's what you guys do in class, and it's, um, 
so that's why we were like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, we're, we're never gonna kick you out of class. You'll have to leave us, you know? And like I said, you never really leave us because you're on my mailing stuff, so you're for me all the time. Um, and you, you had a question, right? Are the classes at night or evening? Like Both. Yeah, so we have day classes and night classes, depending on the location. So Colmac, I, I, like Colmac, I have a 12 o'clock class. Uh, I have a 145 class in Bayshore. I have another 12 o'clock class in Smithtown. Most of my Suffolk locations, I have a lot of day classes. Out here, it's uh, Wanto, it's at 3.30. Winthrop, 6. Wanto, Kansas Center, 6. And those are the classes I have out here now. After six, no. What time are you thinking? Um, well, um, normally when I work, I work until seven thirty, so it ends up being like seven thirty or eight o'clock. No, definitely not during the winter. Even like for, um, I think it's harder to, to get out. But maybe in the in the summer we can switch things around a little bit, especially that's you know we do our walking groups sometimes. When did we do those? Did you, did you guys do those? I didn't do that. Yet. Yeah, we we did that on. I know you weren't you weren't there yet. We did a a walking group in Eisenhower Park on the weekends. Um, oh, that's yeah, Saturday because we have a, a team for we have a walking team for a, a fundraiser for Long Island Two Day. I don't know if you guys know about the Long Island Two Day. It's a great program, great uh, great organization. But you walk 13 miles, so we um, you really, you really don't have to. It's kind of cool. Like I always tell people, just walk a mile and then you get picked up by this van and they give you like foot massages and stuff. Like, it's like the biggest secret. I'm like, no, don't walk the whole, and they take you over to the tents that they do Reiki in the tents and stuff. That's the best deal. Yeah, ever, a lot of people from Winthrop are doing the um, walk on our team. So what we decided was to start this walking group because people were nervous about walking 30 miles. It's a half marathon, it's a big walk. But it's so well done, you don't even feel like, you know, it's a problem. Well, we were a little crazy in there. It was really funny because we have um, a girl, Penny Niles, who's also a part of Strength Flight team. She's a trainer. She's amazing. She's, She's incredible. She does this thing. I'm not going to say it right. It's called like insate movement. I, I might have said it right. Did I say it right? Insate. So it's all about, um, there's a philosophy out there that says like what, and it's not just a philosophy. I truly do believe this. Henry Ford said it. You know, if you think you can or can't, you're right. So it's about mindset. So what she would do, she would take you guys out to Eisenhower Park at 11 o'clock Saturday morning and walk around doing positive affirmations while walking because the theory is, is that our cells become alive when we have movement, when, we, when we're kinetic. Our, our cells become like all alive and they're paying attention. So now she put in words like, I am strong, I am healthy, I am fearless, I am, yeah, and they walked around like that. It was hysterical. No, it was awesome, and there was a big group, so people were just like, what are they doing? But they were screaming these things, you know, I am strong, and she has them moving. But it was a, so it was a twist on a walking group, you know, and, uh, and Penny is fantastic, so, yeah, so good, good stuff. Um, but that's what all walking groups are like, and then, again, we do prep you to feel confident if you wanted to do a big walk or something like that. Um, no, you don't have to be a part of our team to join our, our group, it doesn't, if, it, one, if you choose to, that's great. If not, it's no worries. Oh, you guys do? Yeah. You How many people did you have on your team last year? Cause I, I was going to say, I think I know you guys have a... Yeah. You know how you recruit so many people. Good stuff. No, it's not. I know, right? But, uh, yeah, I love I love that organization. I mean, Ginny is fantastic. Christy is unbelievable. They work so hard. Are you a beneficiary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're so blessed, you know? good stuff and I would highly recommend no matter you don't even have to go on a team you can just register for it even you know we people like you to be part of the team because it really does help the beneficiaries out but regardless I recommend anyone doing it because it's such a motivational day I mean you walk through from Smith's Point Park and on the way back the last mile after they feed you a fantastic lunch like it's totally stress-free every mile there's a cheer section so you have a beneficiary at a cheer section. We should partner up this year. We should see if we can partner up, because I know she puts them with people. But like we always do, well, last year's theme was a, it's five o'clock somewhere. So unlike us to have a theme like that. But it was, um, so we had like lays and you know, like Jimmy Buffett music playing and stuff like that. So every, every cheer section has a theme. So it makes it fun when you're walking. And then the last mile, they take you over a bridge led by the Suffolk County um, bagpipers. 
if you're a survivor and they walk you over the bridge. It's just magnificent the way the whole entire thing is done. And the whole thing, oh, look at the bubbles. <laughs> the whole thing is, um, I feel like Dory doing that. <laughs> um, the whole thing with that is, is that all, every, all the money that's raised at that walk stays on Long Island, which is really the bigger message for everything, and that's really important. Because a lot of, and I'm glad to hear your beneficiaries, a lot of like small grassroots like Strength for Life truly um, can put a lot of programs on because of that, because of that walk. So that's good. All right, any other questions? When the weather gets nicer. Yeah, we're definitely gonna do it again this year. So, uh, and again, on the website, you can see where it says other free programs. I'll show you. What's the website called? We're gonna link to it, link it uh, on our website. So when you go, go to our website, if you have that, you can just link right to it. What is it? Strength for Life.com? Uh, NY, Strength for Life NY, like New York, okay, yeah. .org though, O-R-G. And so I just clicked on other free programs and you'll see here, this does change, but um, as we add programs, like we just put yoga in, literally just started that three weeks ago. So I have to update this um, page clearly. So um, right now though, you can go onto walking group and if you click on there, I mean, hopefully it works. Yeah, so the, the way we're doing the yoga right now, I'm not used to using these mouses. Okay, the way we're doing the yoga is, okay, so you know how I explained that our classes are eight weeks long and then we take a break to recruit more people and take a break from me and stuff like that? We, um, we put yoga in now because not in every location. So we have a pilot program going in two locations right now to see if I have people that actually are doing it. And um, what that does is that um, it keeps people in the routine of showing up to a place. Because what happens sometimes is that after the eight weeks, and you haven't seen me for four weeks, it's hard to get back into the exercise. So now I'm trying to put a yoga component in there for four weeks to bridge you. So if um, I have two locations going right now out in Suffolk, and we'll see how those go. I have a comment. Uh, last, week, last year I was asking in World one to in one pro for gym uh, about the classes for cancer patients, and they didn't even know that you were there. Yeah, well, see, and that's the thing. And I just them, ask them, and I say, no, here, no, yeah. here, no. But my husband, he, he, I think that he talked to you or something, mm -hmm. and, and he said, yes, it's there, but when I ask, they, they never say no. Yeah, it happens all the time to us, and it even happens at the hospitals, which is, it's so crazy, but I guess when you're dealing with, you know, different people, like if you call Stony Brook and ask us if, they're, if we're there, they'll say, no, we don't know what you're talking about. I think it's just, that's why it's better, like I rely on you guys heavily for word of mouth stuff and to get into your doctor's ears to let them know about our programs and we rely on other beneficiary organizations, coalitions are huge because it is, you get lost in the mix. So you call a gym up and say, do you have free exercise classes? They're gonna, I don't know which gym that we're at would say yes. Oh, except for the Comac location. They would actually, because, but they're a small mom and pop gym. They're not a big organization. Even nurse navigators, I just got a phone call from a nurse navigator at the Inbert Center in Bayshore the other day. And she's like, oh, she, you know, she wanted information about our free classes. Meanwhile, I had just met with them three weeks earlier. So it's, I think when you have big institutions, they don't, you get lost in the cracks, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, but that's why you know, that's why it's really important to do things like this. So then, everyone learns and how we share information amongst you know ourselves with coalitions and stuff like that. So, uh, but we are there. If you register for it, all that stuff comes to me, and then okay. you'll be in the loop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm close and I go to that gym. But they, 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 are you kidding me? And you're a member there too? Yes, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah Mondays at three thirty. Uh -huh. But we're, we're going to start there April 9th. Mm -hmm. I'm good? You're good. Oh, Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And see if everyone would fill out an evaluation on the way out, that would be great. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks, Debbie.